Hi there. This is Mrs. Homemaker's channel, and today we're going to be making a healthy version of a chicken pot pie. Uh, on my previous rec uh, video, I made uh, I showed you how to make healthy pie crust, and I'll be using that a lot whenever I make healthy dishes. So, if you want to click on that, the title is called Healthy Pie Crust. What else? Um, so, anyway, I made that and that was chilled in the refrigerator. And I like to uh, pre bake mine a little bit. Simply, simply because I'm putting hot uh, pot pie filling inside it. Because sometimes when you put hot stuff right in a, a fresh dough, for me, it doesn't always come out right. For this recipe anyway, I like to pre-bake mine a little bit. So it's in the oven. Of course, you can use a store-bought uh, pie crust. You probably don't have to pre-bake that. Okay. So, I... I uh, I chopped, I di cubed, I guess cubed, uh, two cups of chicken breast meat, and I heated the sk skillet, and I'm trying to decode this because I just made a video on that pie crust. Uh, where was I? I heated the pan and I put about about a tablespoon of uh, vegetable oil and I'm browning my chicken. I hope that doesn't take too long. I should have started sooner. Because you don't really need to see this. Well, it doesn't really have to be browned. It just has to be cooked. Because it's going to go in the oven. But I don't want no raw pieces of chicken meat or onions. Oh, I have a half a small onions in here too, diced. So it's just onions and chicken so far. And I have a little bit of potato here. Because remember I said that whenever I make baked potatoes, I always, or cook potatoes, I always uh, like to make extra. So this is a good um, example of why you make extra potatoes, why I make extra potatoes. It makes uh, dishes like this go faster. Because for those of you who come to my channel, know that I work slow. <laughs> so any chance I get to speed things up, it's a plus for me. It's a win-win. Uh, okay. Gonna take a while. Oh, in the meantime, I also made a, a sauce. I call it white sauce. It's a 
I use uh, chicken broth, a cup of chicken broth, and a cup of skim milk since we're making it healthy. You can use uh, regular milk if, you, if it doesn't bother you. But this is a healthy version, so we're using skim milk or low fat milk. And you can get away with that because we're adding uh, one cup of broth and one cup of milk, what, whichever version you want, and um, half a cup of flour. So that will help thicken it. You don't have to rely on the heavy cream. Traditionally, you would use cream. I use a uh, uh, light cream and butter. <laughs> You know, me and my butter. So, omitting those two makes it, it really cuts back on the calories. I can't tell you how many calories it has, but you know right off the bat, my crust is healthy crust. You're not using Crisco shortening butter or lard. So, I'm making two crusts, but if you want to make it even Lighter, just omit the bottom crust and use the top crust. Okay. The pan is blowing. It's kind of slowing down the process. I uh, season the chicken with salt and pepper. That's all you really need to season it for now. Hmm. But, yeah. Actually, you, you can use any season you want. You can get creative. Remember, that's how we cook here. I just make the basics and you provide your creativity. It doesn't have to be chicken, it could be beef. You know, you heard of beef, beef pot pie. So, yes. I'm waiting for the chicken to cook a little bit more. You know, we don't want to eat raw chicken. That is a no no. No matter what dish you're cooking. I just use a mixed vegetable to make it quick and frozen mixed vegetable. It makes it quicker. In the meantime, I went ahead and made another one of those healthy pie crusts. That recipe only makes one crust. Because normally I just make, make the top crust, I don't make the bottom crust when I do the healthy version. Which tastes just fine for me. In fact, I, I like it. I really do. And especially knowing that it's good for you. I have to watch what I'm doing because the bunny's still, bunny was sitting under the shelf but came out sitting behind me. For those of you who don't know, who have uh, this, just come to see me for the first time, I have, we live with lots of cats and I'm talking lots, and we have a bunny here. We also have a turtle, but he's upstairs. And yes, a lot of animals. And and that's why I call myself Mrs. Homemaker, the channel's name, Mrs. Homemaker. We provide homes for the rescued animals. Yes, they were all from shelters or rescue. We rescue, you know, they just come to our yard and wounded and 
and that one cat had babies in the barn. We rescued that. We have to bring them indoors because we had um what do you call those critters? The real fat not uh raccoons, yes, raccoons. They were very vicious. In fact one attacked one of the kittens which we rescued. <laughs> So, yes, they're all rescue cats, and I'm always promoting uh, people to adopt pets from the shelter. Yes, this is sort of like a, it's a, I cook a lot, and I do other things a lot, but uh, mainly I, I wanted a platform where I can also talk about Adopting pets from the shelter and other things. <laughs> okay, this is getting there. I should just put it on pause until it's all done. But then I add about a, you can just eyeball the vegetables. I add one, one package. Cause if you have extra, extra filling than what the pie crust holds, cause I'm making a small pie. If you have extra, you can always just, just, uh, put it in another dish and eat it so as a chicken stew. Or, you could make, um, Dumplings and put dumplings on top too. Put this potato. So it's basically chicken, onions, carrots, peas, corn, and this one has green beans in it, and potato. I like to put potato in mine. Some people don't, but I prefer. Anytime you can add a little extra starch to this kind of a dish, it will hold the, the filling together better. If it's too watery, any vegetable that has extra moisture, it makes this crust soggy. Common sense. I didn't really have to tell you. <laughs> but I like to say these little things because just as a reminder and as a filler. <laughs> you don't want, um, you know, I have too many silent, silent moments here. So whatever pops into my head, I just spit it out. Okay, this is looking good. I might as well dump the whole thing in. See what I mean? I might as well use the whole thing. That way you don't have to... You can make multiple dinners. And since you don't want to eat the same thing twice, you might want to put uh, this one in the freezer, the leftover. Save it for another meal. See? There's always a madness to my method. <laughs> like, remember one time I, I made the, remember I made the potato soup? Uh, no, it was potato. Was it a vegetable soup? Was it some kind of cream soup? Was, and I said, save it? Well, this is, you can do this kind of stuff with it too. You don't have to make a special white sauce for it. I didn't have anything, so I just made the white sauce. But if I made too much, I just make a pot. And if I make too much, I, I save my sauce too. They're wonderful on top of meat or, or anything really. So while this is still cooking, I think 
I'm going to heat the oven. I'll be right back. I said heat the oven, but I was act I forgot I was actually checking on the crust. I have a crust in the oven. I didn't set the timer, so I gotta keep an eye on it. You don't want it too too done because we're putting the top crust on, remember? Just want it just just so it's not till it's like pale. Let's put this in there. You want the sauce to be a little on the thick side because you don't want to cut in and have everything too runny. And if you see that you have more vegetable than sauce, you know how to fix that. I don't need to tell you. You just add more milk or chicken broth. This ratio is half chicken broth and half milk. So you might want to add half chicken half chicken broth and half milk. And if it gets too thin, just put a little bit more flour. See, this is home style cooking. It really is. Although I gave you recipes for it, you don't really need the recipe. You just do your own thing. As long as it's tasty and it looks pretty. That's all I'm worried about. And that your family enjoys it. I don't know. I should put this in a little bit more angle. There we go. So, yeah, I just made the top crust here. I use two wax sheets of wax paper, sandwich it, and roll it out. It makes it easier. It won't, it won't stick. It makes it easier to handle. So that would be my tip for pie crust. You can use wax paper, or you could use... Um, one of those plastic sheets. What do you call it? <laughs> plastic, you know what I mean. Like saran wrap. Yeah. They even have a pie crust, uh, like a plastic bag that you can put the dough in and roll it. You zip, it zip it up and roll it. But. I find that more hassle because you got to clean it and, you know, and you don't really need it. You just need a piece of paper, just throw it away when you're done. Of course, some people don't like to throw, the, uh, would think that of a waste. In that case, yeah, and those pie crust bags are handy. But I used it more than once. Like this one, I just made the bottom crust and it's the same, same sheet. You know me, I'm tight. <laughs> and I, I want to make uh, two more crusts while I'm in the mood today. I'd like to make some pie. Pie or, or a, um, like I said, rhubarb raspberry crisp. So, yeah, this can take a little bit longer. I always use the thermometer. Call me silly, but I want to make sure the chicken reaches a certain temp temperature.
Anyway, so this crust is done. What else do I have to share with you? Okay. Oh, I'll just chit chat a little bit. Um, I like I said, I'm gonna probably make something with rhubarb since I still have rhubarb, and uh, maybe I'll do some food prep today because I I have a cherries and I just picked some raspberry and blueberries. So yep, before the birds get them. We don't have it under net or caged or anything, so it's first come, first serve. <laughs> the birds get here first, you know, they get the berries. But I try to pick them every day, even if it's just a handful. As soon as they're ripe, I have to pick them or else the birds will get them. So I'll probably be doing that, a little bit of food prep. What else can I share with you whilst we're waiting? What time is it? It's 21 minutes. That's not too bad. I want to keep this no longer than half an hour, if possible. I say, if possible. Because those who know me know I can stretch a 10 minute recipe into an hour. But I think I'm getting better. And although I don't look comfortable, I am feeling a lot more comfortable. I just talk slow, but that is my nature. And I am a little on the uptight side. <laughs> so that is just me. But as far as nerves go, I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you for all your support. As you can see, my kitchen is already, my sink is already filled with dishes. And you want to taste it. I, I did put salt and pepper, but. Using metal, you're not supposed to use metal on the pan. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Good. I'll just rinse it and use the spoon again. I'm trying to be better. Remember, in the, all the other previous videos, I kept taking one spoon after another, and next thing you know, I've emptied my whole drawer, drawer of spoons. <laughs> so I'm trying to do better with that. Rinse it out and use the same spoon. I tell myself. It doesn't always work. Okay, I think this is good enough. I do want to taste. It was too hot to taste the chicken. <laughs> Yeah, I always recommend tasting. Because you can follow recipe to the tea and then find out, oh, something doesn't taste right this time. Anything can happen. So, tasting is, it's, uh, 
It's a must. It's a crucial part of co cooking. Here I go into my silverware again. <laughs> I don't know if I use this for potatoes or chicken. I think potatoes. I get enough. <laughs> You make sure the chicken, I can see, the chicken is, is cooked all the way, but not too overdone. Good. <laughs> That's that's why I say always taste. That way you know the chicken is done. You know it's cooked all the way. Ooh. Mm. Good. So yeah. Okay. That is cooked. Let this sit a little bit. The fan will help to cool it off a bit. This is really hot. Now I'm going to put it in my pie crust. This might have got a little too done. Let's see? Well, this is that low fat pie crust. See how nice it came out? I mean, it only took like 15 minutes. Then go, go back and check the other recipe. It's called low fat pie crust. It's very simple to make. And it's really good for you. So you can have a traditional. Oh, this is heavy. This is really heavy. <laughs> it's going to make for a very hearty dish. I should have. I should have made into a bigger, bigger pie pan. But I thought we would eat this and I can freeze the other one. Well, I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking of making several batches of it. If my bottom doesn't get too done, I will let you know. Now, it's been sitting here for a while. I hope it didn't get too, too uh, warm. Sometimes when it's too, too uh, warm, warm, it makes it hard. It sticks. It makes it harder to handle. We'll find out. See, that's what I like to uh, paper. It's easier to handle. And you can you always use your rolling pin as an aid to keep it under control. And also, you know, <laughs> keep whoever is not listening, not being nice, under control too. It's a multi-purpose tool. Uh, okay, so I was trying to be funny. It, I can't 
crack a joke. I'm just not good at that stuff. So, here, I should have made it a little bit bigger, but it will do. Just, just pinch it and stretch it. That's all. And if you find that you really made it smaller than what you should, so what? <laughs> it's still a dough. Don't don't worry or stress too much. A lot, of, a lot of people don't pre-bake the, the bottom dough, so they just pinch it. I hope this comes out right. I just thought I would pre-bake it. I didn't used to do that, but... I did it one time, and it came out pretty good, so I thought, well, I'll try... I'll start doing that. So this is the second time. But I just hope it, the juice does. Sometimes the juice oozes out. But I t I'll show you a trick for that too. There is a trick. For dishes like saucy dishes like this, or even apple pies, you know how they ooze out. I just hope the top crust doesn't shrink. Sometimes you know how crust will shrink. Now, during the holidays, these scraps of dough, I will roll them up and make uh, decorations. For instance, for Thanksgiving, I made a pumpkin pie with the, sh with the scraps of dough shaped into leaves and pumpkin and just decorate the top. It came out really nice. I might do that again or just show you some old old uh, pictures of it. <laughs> I promise. I just started making video. I think. Oh, maybe six months ago. But then there was a long time lapse in between each video. But I've always been interested in uh, taking food pictures. That's what got me started. I love taking, I love to eat, I love food, and I love taking pictures. Not so much being in the picture as much, but. It doesn't have to be pretty. This is a homey dish. Just tell them it's, it's rustic. Whenever you have something that doesn't look as pretty or as artistic, just say it's a rustic dish. See? That works. Trust me. It's a rustic pie. Old fashioned rustic pie. There we have it. And you might want to cut some slits. I just poke a hole, jiggle it a little bit. Because you know it's going to bubble. This lets the, it vents it out. Although in the market these days you will see, uh, what do they call it? Pie venter maybe? It's, you know, ornamental ceramic thing that you can put in the middle and it's supposed to let the air escape. But I like to poke a hole. 
you can make pretty designs. Playing now. That's enough. <laughs> I'm, I said I'm trying to make. Oh, it's past 35 minutes. 35 minutes. I gotta. I gotta put this on pause till it's cooked, so we can do some taste testing. So that's it. And you, I'm gonna pause it, and I'll be back when it's done. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay, I'm back. Remember, I just put it on pause till this was baked. It took about 40 minutes. Even though the bottom was half baked already, it still took that long. I think that's good. We'll have to see when we cut it open. <laughs> okay. Now, get a knife. Here we go. Oh, I needed this. You should let this rest a little bit longer. I did have it sitting on the counter for a while, but the crust is definitely flaky and crunchy. Remember, this is a low fat. Why well, didn't cut in the center? Well, we'll just make a smaller portion. <laughs> you can have the big portion. Okay. Oh, it's hot. Probably be better if I cooled it up a bit longer. But we don't have that kind of time to eat. We want to eat. Okay. I think I need a spoon better. Okay, here's a trick now. I cut a big piece. I hope it... Ooh, I needed a spoon. Because this does not help. We got dark outside all of a sudden. Now I can move better. Of course, that was the whole purpose of wearing that so you don't twist it. Ooh. I can just go this way. Yep, if it falls apart, just kind of reshape it. Just tuck it underneath the top crust. Oops. 
See, it's a, uh, it's thick. So I'm just fighting with the cats. <laughs> I think one of his cats are getting a little pesty, demanding of his time. I wonder if he wants more than that. But yes, it looks good. I thought I would serve it with fresh tomatoes. Since these are for my garden. Yes, my first tomato. I should have taken a picture of it before I sliced it. I have a lot of green ones out there, but they're just not ripening fast enough. Every garden, Cook's garden should have a at least parsley in the herb garden. Okay. That's it. Let me show you what it looks like and see that? Hmm. Looks good, huh? And it's good for you. It's low fat, very hearty, and I will take a little taste test. This, this is going to be my piece. Let me make that again. To be honest, I do prefer my traditional pie crust is flakier and a bit more tender but this is considering how low fat and calorie and healthy for you I would make this again and I would recommend uh, using the oil instead of lard or butter mm. and it's actually really it's tasty it's really good I can't stop eating. Um, I was just enjoying it. My train of thought just went out the door. <laughs> can't remember what I was going to say. But yeah, I would recommend this. Oh, if you wanted to even make it better, you can just omit the bottom crust and just put the top crust on. Just See, it holds its shape. The half a cup of flour really does the trick. It holds everything together. So, okay, so this is it. I will close for today, and I hope you enjoyed this hot pie. This one is for a special request from, I can't say his name. Is it Joseph, Joseph Costado? Something like that. <laughs> you know who you are. So, again, I pray peace to the world, and God bless.
and I hope you come back for my next video. Bye-bye.